Hey guys, my name is Steve and welcome to AEAC Vlog. If you're new around here, that's cool, me too. This is actually a sister channel to my primary YouTube channel, the Air Gun Exploration and Advancement channel, otherwise known as AEAC Home. Over there, you will get full in-depth product reviews pertaining to everything air gun, as well as around the world event coverage. But this here channel is my opportunity to get in front of you, slow things down a little bit, and bring you in on some learning, discovery, and approach as I get these products in and get them ready for their full review over on AEAC Home. But my goodness, what a couple of days of learning it has been. And let us please begin by addressing the obvious elephant in the room. And that is this right here. This is Hatsan's brand new 4500 PSI portable class compressor called the Spark, and it is part of their Tact Air lineup. Now, the unit as you see it right here, and just with these cables, pre pretending for a second that you don't see this, and this piece isn't right here, this is 420 bucks, and this is a 12 volt system. So what that means to you is you can take it out into the wilderness, you can take it to the farm, you can take it camping, and you can hook it up to the 12 volt battery in your truck, in your tractor, in your ATV, in your RV, and you can fill air guns directly up to 4,500 PSI and 1,000 cc's. So it is not meant for bottles. But as you see that system, that is a $420 system, which is really exciting to me because it kind of bridges the gap between the cost of a hand pump and the cost of an SCBA tank, but it's portable, it's much quicker, and it involves much less manual labor. Now, as you see, you can also plug this into 110 volt at your home. And if you want to do that, you need to purchase, pretend this isn't here for a second, this right here. This is called Hatsan's Tact Air 12 volt power supply, as I believe what they call it. And what it actually is, I think, is just a 110 volt to 12 volt converter so that you can plug it into your wall and it will work with uh, this compressor. This piece here is about 60 bucks. Now this right here is Hatsan's Tact Air Universal Inline Filter. It's got, it's serviceable, it unscrews, it comes apart, and it's got about that much room inside for desiccant, which you will need to purchase on your own. This is a material, some kind of like dehydrated aluminum oxide gobbly goop, I don't know, but it basically absorbs moisture. It fits inside here. When you buy this, you're also gonna get a ton of dust filters, and they very simply work in line via the Foster Quick Connect to help keep moisture and dust out of your gun. Now, if you live in a very humid place like I live, or if you're overly concerned about moisture, you can buy aftermarket much larger systems than this. I mean, like big professional systems that will really do um, a better job of keeping moisture out of your gun. But this is a great idea as a filter by itself for sure. And I think this is about 30 bucks. And the desiccant you can buy online. I would recommend Amazon, eBay, something like that. You can buy it in bulk for relatively uh, inexpensive. But... When I first turned this on and I first started playing with this the other day, I couldn't help, I was giggling like a little girl. And I was giggling like that because, well, one, because it's so fun and so easy to use, but it's so reasonably priced and it fills so quickly. It took this air gun, for, and this air gun has 165 cc reservoir, if I'm not mistaken. It took the flash from about 125 bar to 200 bar in about a minute and 30 seconds. And that by itself is pretty darn exciting because I know with a hand pump going full speed, which I know y'all have corrected me in the past, is bad for the hand pump. You know, that takes about two or three minutes, but in reality it takes about five. So this is great if you're tired of, uh, of, tired of doing that. Now the system, like I said, is very easy to use. It's as simple as an on-off switch for the fan, which cools the system and an on-off switch that actually turns the compressor itself on and off. You'll see the two tabs here up in the front. That is simply to either secure, excuse me, the 12 volt power supply so that you can plug it into 110 or secure 
the little ends here so that you can plug it to a 12 volt battery of, uh, of some sort. But uh, the fill whip also comes with it. It's a Foster Quick Connect on both ends, as you can see here. So I very simply just connected it to my proprietary Hudson Pro and uh, off I go. If I was going to use the inline filter, I would just run it in line on one end of the other, uh, this one or another one, and, um, and I would be good to go there. But um, looking at the top of the unit, just to kind of take you through it very briefly, you'll see um, a temperature gauge up here at the top. It is digital. It is reading 73 degrees, and I have my thermostat set to exactly 73 degrees. It is freezing here in Florida. It went down to 39 degrees last night, and it's like 40-some outside, so I've got the heat on today. But um, it's good to see that that's as accurate as it is when I filled this gun up with it yesterday from that 125 to 200 bar. The highest temperature I saw on that was about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So that was kind of cool to see. Now at the bottom here, you will see a pressure gauge letting you know the PSI of where you are at in the fill. It's important to monitor that, monitor that because there's no auto shutoff feature or auto purging feature in this. It's a very fast filling system designed for guns only. So it's something that you constantly want to be around and monitor and flip off manually as soon as you get to your desired pressure. Now over here on the side is the purge so that you can purge the air between the compressor and the gun when you're done filling it. And something else to be mindful of is um, the pressure gauge is in MPA, which is megapaxel. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not a chemist or a physicist, so if I've pronounced that wrong, I forgive you, but the important takeaway is the conversion rate to bar is about 10 to 1. So if you're filling to 200 bar, that's 20 MPA on the gauge, so make sure that you're paying attention to the gun's gauge and this gauge and not overfilling, because like I said, there's no auto shutoff. Now, maybe there is at 4,500 PSI, but I'm not about to, uh, to uh, test that. But other than that, there's a neat little carry handle on the top. It is branded very beautifully hot sun all the way around. And um, really that's all there is uh, to that unit. Um, I might as well plug it in for y'all for a second because I know you're probably all wondering what it sounds like. It sounds very much like a tool compressor that you would buy at Home Depot and Lowe's, except it sounds a little angrier when it's under pressure and, uh, and filling. But anyway, All right, so when I plugged it in, you immediately heard the 12 volt power supplies fan activate. And then all you do with the compressor itself is you hook it to the gun, you turn on the fan on the compressor. It is quite loud, sounds like an angry blow dryer. And then you turn on the compressor itself. So that's what that all sounds like, enough about that. Let me just take a second and push all of this aside because we've got a lot more exciting stuff to get to. And that is this right here. This is Hatsan's, I shouldn't say brand new, it's probably been out for somewhere between six and nine months, but it is their Flash Pup. This one's in 22 cal. And I reviewed the Flash carbine in the spring of this year and it was in the 25 and it shares the exact same engine and power plant as the Flash Pup, except the stock is different and it is less expensive. I think that one was around 300. This is only around 400. And I was really blown away, and I think a lot of you guys were too, at the performance of that gun. And I spent the last couple of days learning this one, and I'm kinda equally as freaked out by how good it is for just 400 bucks. And I want to bring you guys in on the broad strokes of that, and then we'll call it a day, and then you'll have to wait for the full review, which will probably up, be up sometime uh, next week because I've got to uh, film it yet. But overall, the gun is just 32 inches long. So for a lot of you that are sensitive to some of these gigantic guns that are coming our way that the industry is putting out, you know, this might be the answer for you. Now, the other kind of neat thing is it only weighed 6.3 pounds by itself when I put it on the scale. As you see it here with a scope, mounts all filled with air, even I put lead in the magazine, it came in right at 7.9, which is pretty darn good for an air gun this short, also in a bullpup configuration, because all the weight is centered right about at the palm of my hand, and it's so in close to the body 
that the thing feels, even in its configuration like this, it feels like it's just four or five pounds, which makes it a great carry point shoot swing out in, uh, out in the field. Now, um, the other thing that kind of really took me back is, is it's not regulated, okay? So let's just address that right up front. But Hatsan nailed the tuning in this gun. Um, the reservoir, like I said, is 165 bar. If you fill it, um, 165 cc's, excuse me, it is very early here and I just woke up, 165 cc's and you take that all the way up to its 200 bar max and you shoot that all the way through the green on the gauge, so from 200 bar down to 100 bar, you're gonna get about 50 usable shots at distances like 25 yards-ish. And as she runs out of steam, you can expect your POI to shift a little bit and that group to open up to 0.65, 0.70-ish. However, okay, the gun comes with two 12-shot magazines, all right? Now, if you fill it up to 200 bar and you shoot just the two magazines, 24 or about 25 shots, it'll reward with an extreme spread over those 25 shots of 28-ish feet per second and a standard deviation of 6.7-ish feet per second at a 31 foot-pound average across the 25 shots with an 18 grain pellet. And that is damn good and really all you need for 400 bucks because what that'll mean to you that consistency will give you very, that consistency in the valving, in the tuning, will give you very good consistency with your shot placement at distances like 50 and 100 yards. And I'm very excited to get this out to those ranges and try it because in my backyard when I was culling like pretty much every brand and type of planet on the earth through this gun, I found the barrel to be very non-pellet fussy or non-sensitive. That being said, it definitely had its favorites and five shot groups between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch were not uncommon amongst the pellets that this barrel liked most. The barrel, by the way, is Turkish made. The gun itself is made in Turkey. So it's an in-house proprietary barrel. And I must say they're doing a, a very, very good job. Now you'll notice the barrel is also shrouded with, with Hatsan's QE, or Quiet Energy Technology. Um, there's, uh, I don't know if you'd call them baffles in here. They are a baffle of some sort. They're made out of polymer. They're also wrapped in felt, but whatever the system is, it does a phenomenal job of quieting the 31 foot-pounds that is coming out of this little pup, okay? And by the way, it's pushing those 18 grain pellets to about 878 feet per second or so. So it's pretty snorty, all right? Now, when I tested the, when I was able to review the flash carbine in 25, I had remembered this cocking to be um, pretty heavy and also not so slick. I don't know, this is a gun that's newer than that, so I don't know if they've made some production changes, but the cocking on this thing is incredibly slick. It's like they put slick 50 engine oil or something in here. I mean, it's really slick, it's really light. And I think that is gonna mean a lot to Eladia and it kind of took me back and it kind of surprised me. So I wanted to pass that along to you. So it's certainly something that I wasn't expecting. Now, if you flip the gun around, you'll see it's got a nice polymer cheek piece, which is adjustable. Even with like one inch tall rings, I found it best in the lowest position. So you guys will have to experiment with that. But the other thing that I really appreciated was that the pressure gauge is on the side, not up in the front. So as a shooter, all you gotta do is look down and see where you are. However, if I own this gun, I'm just gonna fill up the two magazines when they're done, and fill this up to 200 bar. When they're done, I'm gonna refill the gun, reload the magazines, keep things really simple for myself. On that note, the gun also ships with a single shot tray, which is really cool if you wanna put like poly mags in it or try some longer pellets. I found that it didn't like any of the poly mags, poly mag shorts, or metal mags. It didn't like them really, maybe six tenths-ish at 25 yards. Certainly good enough for, 
you know, squirrel and rabbit hunting, but when it's shooting like one eighth quarter inch groups with all the guys you see on the ground here, there's no sense in ta me taking those pellets out to 50 and 100 when I uh, get into the full review, okay? The last thing that I really appreciated about this gun was the trigger, okay? Now when I put the gauge on it when it first came to me, it was two pounds, six ounces, two pounds, eight ounces-ish, and I did all of my pellet culling or all of my learning over the last couple of days with it set as it came from the factory. So those really tiny hole drilling groups were as delivered. But the really neat thing, the, owner ma the owner's manual takes you through how to adjust the trigger on the gun. And it's Hatsan's famous Quattro trigger. And a lot of you love it. But what's really neat is you don't have to take the chassis out of the stock to adjust the trigger. The adjustments are all right here. There's three screws. There's two in this slot. There's one in this back one. The two screws in the front slot arrived all the way screwed down. I did some experimenting there, wasn't able to improve on the trigger, so I just re returned them to the fully clockwise or seated position. But this little gangster on the back here, um, as I started moving it, if I remember, counterclockwise in quarter, quarter turn increments, it really started to bring down that trigger brake weight, and I was able to get it to below a pound very easily. So I backed that up to a pound even, and I'm telling you guys, for a $400 gun with a dual stage trigger, this is all you need for hunting, and it is certainly good enough for match work. I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see it, but let's try. There's the first stage take up, and just a pound of effort, and that sucker breaks like glass. So just some things that really kind of got me revved up about uh, about the product, especially for for the price point, okay? Now, um, it really liked the JSP 18 grain, the JSP 16 grain. For some reason, I couldn't get it to like it like the Air Arms 18 grain. It did like the Air Arms 16 grain. It liked the Barracuda matches and the 5.51 head size, but I couldn't get it to like the Barracudas in the 5.50 head size consistently, okay? Um, and this was interesting. These JSB, the new redesigned monsters, this is a 25 grain, 22 pellet. It put five of these in 25 yards consistently in the hole the size of a Tic Tac. I mean, that just completely blew, away, blew me away. They're pushing, I don't know, 760, 770 feet per second somewhere in, uh, in that range. And it did the same thing with these H&N Sniper Magnums tic-tac sized hole groups at 25. So the barrel is loving those two pellets. And this kind of freaked me out. These are Predators GTOs. This is an alloy pellet. It's only 11.75 grains. This gun will not push them to supersonic, but damn close, right around 1,000 feet per second, 1,050 in that range into my shock. Um, they were grouping at a quarter inch, maybe a tad over at 25 yards. Lord, don't ask me how, but they were. The gun liked them. And that's probably all that matters, especially if you want a pellet that will quickly run out of steam because you're concerned about, uh, about backdrop, okay? Now, if you guys are new to AEAC and new to Air Gun Nation and new to our partnership with Hatsan, Hatsan supports our Review Discuss Win events, which is where the manufacturer sends a product to me for review and then I review it and I send y'all over to Air Gun Nation Forum so that you guys can have a proper discussion on the gun, you know, in a proper venue over there at the forum. And then you get to enjoy the contest and the giveaway on the gun. And, um, you know, that kind of means a lot to me and Michael, owner of Air Gun Nation, and I'm sure the industry too. So I just wanted to thank Hatsan for that. But this pup is going to be November's or maybe the first week of December. Sorry, I've got some weather coming in. But, um, you know, one of y'all is going to win the gun, the Hudson Spark compressor, a 12 volt power supply, the universal inline filter, a set of Sports Match Rings UK from our buddy Sports Match over in, uh, in England. And JSB is even throwing in a uh, 22 sampler pack for y'all. So, 
you know, to kind of plug that. That's all going to go down next week, something for sure that uh, we should all look forward to. Last thing before I want to depart is Air Guns of Arizona did something really nice for me because very simply I asked them on y'all's behalf to send me some price price point scopes for these value priced air guns that come in for review. And they gave me about five of them that were kind of in that $200 window. And this is one of them here. This is the Athlon Talos. And it's retail is about 180 bucks. Like I said, you can get them at Air Guns of Arizona. And it's a three to 12 by 40. And I have really enjoyed the last couple of days with this scope and have kind of surprised at how good it is for 180 bucks. So if you're looking for a good match for your Hatsan, um, I fully recommend this, uh, this, this scope. And um, I probably will talk more about this and the rest in the full review. So let's just uh, stop it right there. I believe that is everything I've wanted to cover, at least for today. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, thank you so much for tuning in and um, have a fantastic week.